A spacecraft has been in deep sleep for the last eight months, but now it's time to wake up and smell the Martian atmosphere. Throughout the cruise phase, the entire system was kept at a comfortable temperature of 18 degrees Celsius, while the outside temperature was minus 125 degrees Celsius or lower. The time has come to separate the lander from the cruise stage, and in doing so, the fluid that circulated heat in the spacecraft has to be vented into space. But how can we be sure that all of the fluid has been vented before separation? We use radio signs. When it comes to taking measurements in space, things are not so straightforward. That's because many of the measurements that we take requires the mass of an object to be known. Mass is easily measured when you're within a relatively strong gravitational field, something you won't find in interplanetary space. Motion is also easy to measure when you have a reference point close by, something you won't find in interplanetary space either. As hard as this problem seems, we can figure out both mass and motion without using any instruments at all. All we need to do is just communicate with our spacecraft as normal and we'll get the data for free. Well, almost. There is additional math and precise calibration involved, but you won't need any additional hardware. And that's the magic of radio science. So, let's start with the situation where we need to know when we've completed venting the fluid into space before crew stage separation. As we start venting the coolant into space, Newton's third law of motion will apply. Every action has an equal but opposite reaction. Since we're venting the fluid in one direction, our spacecraft will move in the opposite direction. Next, we apply Newton's second law of motion, F equals MA. Rearrange that to A equals F divided by M. We see that the force required to vent the fluid will also accelerate our spacecraft. If we vent in the direction of Earth, then our spacecraft will accelerate in the direction directly away from Earth. As the spacecraft speed changes relative to Earth, the frequency that is used to communicate with Earth will also change. Slightly, but enough to be detected. This is the Doppler effect. As long as the spacecraft is venting fluid, it will accelerate and we will detect that. When it runs out of fluid, the acceleration will stop because there's nothing to push out. Once we don't measure any acceleration, then we know we're done venting. It's pretty clever. Knowing how the Doppler effect works, our next example should be straightforward. During entry, descent, and landing, or EDL, of the Curiosity rover, its speed was tracked using the Doppler method, even though it was only transmitting low bit status tones back to Earth. So, parachute deployment was confirmed not just because the status tone said so, but because a large deceleration was detected at the same time. On to the next example. Radio signs was also used when the sky crane lowered Curiosity onto the Martian surface. Right after touchdown, the cables were cut and the descent stage was to fly away and crash some distance away from the rover. Once again, status tones were sent, but the way that it was actually confirmed was by measuring the increase in strength of the radio signal from the rover, since the descent stage was no longer above it, attenuating the signal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A different example is measuring the movement of an entire planet. RISE, short for Rotation and Interior Structure Experiment, is an experiment that is being performed on the inside lander on Mars as of the making of this video. It's designed to measure the rotation and wobble of Mars. It uses the X-band communication channel that InSight uses to communicate directly to Earth. By retransmitting a special signal sent from Earth back to Earth directly, the exact location of InSight can be determined in 3D space. And since Mars is not moving relative to InSight, the position and orientation of Mars can be determined. The last example doesn't use radio signs, but it does use existing hardware on the spacecraft. OSIRIS-REx is currently visiting asteroid 101955 Bennu. Its goal is to return a sample of that asteroid to Earth in September of 2023. What's interesting about this mission is the way in which the spacecraft will measure the mass of the sample it collects. After retrieving the sample, it will spin itself around. Then by measuring how much force it takes to stop the spin, 
versus how much force it took without the sample, the mass of the sample can be determined. There are more ways to make physical measurements in space without using dedicated instruments. We will cover these in the second part of the Invisible Sensor. Thanks for watching. I'm DexDFX for the Celestial Sphere.